Hi and welcome to this week's video. So this week I'm going to install an OLED mod chip. It's got a new Link Micro 10.1 inch microscope so I thought I'll put it to the test and what bigger test than to install an OLED chip. I've done one once before and said I wouldn't do it again. So pause the chip from AliExpress, just search RP2040 on AliExpress to find one. And this is my 10 inch microscope, so I'm hoping it's going to make it a lot easier than the last time I installed one of these mod chips. Unboxing video for the microscope is in the description. So first out we need to remove all the screws. When the back peels off, then we need to remove the rear heat shield. Disconnect the battery straight away, and then we need to remove all the internals. Release all the ribbon cables, last few screws, and then lift the motherboard out. So first off we'll prep the cables, so just a bit of flux on the pads and then a little bit of solder, solder and iron set at 320 degrees C, and then same on this connection as well, just need to put a nice bit of flux and then solder the little pads that I'm soldering. and then a good clean of isopropyl alcohol. Then you need to get a needle and stick it in the CPU heat shield edging and then just slightly bend out the tabs so that the cover will come off. So this switch OLED I bought was on a previous repair so it was a failed mod. I mention this now because this part of the heat shield that I'm showing had already been cut so what you need to do is carefully get some wire snips and cut this section that I've circled. There's also a trace here that I've pointed at. This bit needs scraping away very slightly because we will need to solder this. Or again, this has already been done on my switch that I've already got so I can't demonstrate doing it again. Then remove all the thermal paste and then we can lay down this first cable. There's a few solder points that we need to solder. So line it up as I do and then I put a bit of Kapton tape just to hold it in place while I do the first couple of solder points. So a little bit of flux will make the solder flow better. Twist it round, get in the best position that you feel comfortable soldering. So this is the point D, this is the point that you've scraped away to expose a little bit of copper. So you just solder to that and then I just get my tweezers to gently lift it to make sure that the solder has taken. And then when I'm happy I then add a little bit of solder to this cap here. You just need to make sure you make a nice good connection. Then we can move on to the next two. So another cap just needs to be soldered to. Give it plenty of solder, might need to hold it down a little bit, stop it moving. And then this one's just an earthing tab, so you just put a little bit of solder connected to the heat shield. Then we add some more flux, line it up again. And then these two caps need to be soldered directly to, so join them both up. And then we spin it round and then do the same on the other side. Plenty of solder, make sure both caps are connected to the solder. Quick look over, it looks okay, so then we just need to give it a wipe with isopropyl alcohol. Just be careful because you don't want to be ripping it and then ripping any traces off, it'll make it a lot harder to install if you do that. Now 
and then once it's clean and dry we can give it another once over just to make sure that all the solder joints look complete and strong. So then we just need to insert this bit so we line it up to make sure that it goes over the two chips that we're going to solder to, make sure the two on the side are lined, again put a little bit of capped on tape to hold it in place, add a little bit of flux and then plenty more solder so you want to be keeping keep it moving you don't want to hold it on too long because you'll run the risk of taking the caps off then when you know you're happy and you've got a solid solder joint then move on to the next one again plenty of flux plenty of solder make sure the solder touches both of the ends of the cap clean with isopropyl and then just solder the air fin legs at the bottom as well then we'll just get the that zero adapter prepped as well so a little bit of flux on the points and then we'll add a little bit of solder to the edges you don't want to solder an iron too high you don't want to be melting any plastic And then we use a pin to remove the heat shield on the back. So I have read a lot of people say that you can insert them without taking this section off. I prefer to take it off personally but it's entirely up to you. Just be really careful when you're using wire snips though because you don't want to be cutting further down and then ripping any of the traces on the board. Cut what you can, gently wiggle off, and then we just need to remove this back bar here. I've also found it easy if you remove this corner section as well. Then I just add a little bit of flux and a little bit of solder just to clean it up a little bit, just to make sure that it's nice and smooth when we put the adapter in. So you need to make sure that it's lined up and it goes in nice and square. If it's slightly off centre then it's not going to line up. So just slowly edge it in, take your time. And then push it in until it doesn't go any further. I thought mine would go in a little bit more because of where the line was but it, it wasn't as it should be. Then you need to get your multimeter and then put it in dial mode. Put one end on ground and the other end on the small dot on the adapter. If it's making the correct contact, you should be getting a reading between 500 and 800. So when you're happy, just add the solder to the legs, add plenty so it makes it nice and solid so there's less chance or no chance of it moving. And then just give it another quick reading to make sure I'm still getting between the 500 and 800 which I am. So notice on this there is a little adapter on the ends of where I think you can do a little bit of extra solder to the caps but I didn't bother with this. So this is the wiring that I'm using, there's a couple of connections that we need to do. So we just solder one into the adapter itself and then we just need to position it so that it comes out of the corner and wraps around to the other side. So just push it in a little bit so that you can put the cover back on without the wire getting trapped. And then we flip it over and then we just can snip it to the right length 
and then we just need to solder to the C point on the connector. Then the solder points that we did on the caps, you just need to add a little bit of cap on tape. This will stop any potential shorts when we reapply the heat shield in a bit. So the top edge of the heat shield, I just slightly bend up all the tabs at the, at the end because there's a few ribbon cables that are coming out, you don't want them trapping. So just lift them all ones up and then reattach the heat shield, making sure that you've put some new thermal paste on as well. Clip them all around to make sure they're all back in place. Now we need to put the latest firmware on the chip. So when I plugged it in, it was just flashing. So what you need to do is hold the boot button, then plug it in, and then it'll be recognized by the PC. Then it'll show up as an external device. So I normally delete whatever's in there already. And then all you need to do is copy your firmware file to the chip itself. This takes literally a couple of seconds to copy across. It should give a flash and then that means it's done. It'll automatically eject itself. So back to the board. So we just need to solder this point on the back. So again, same bit of wire. Clean. And then we flip the board back over. We wrap it round. And then we're going to go to the B points on the board itself. Another quick clean. And then I'm going to stick a little bit of double sided tape on the back of the chip itself. Just to hold it in place so it doesn't move. And you want to put it just to the edge of the heat shield this way it won't get in the way of when we put the heat clamp back on then put the two ribbon cables in slide them both in and put the little tabs across and that all looks good so now we need to get the test so put the board back in attach everything that we need to reattach the battery and then press the power button so the chip should be flashing a couple of times. It will take a couple of seconds because this is the first time it's trying to initiate, it's trying to learn. So I'll leave it to do its thing and then eventually, hopefully it should turn yellow. And then when you flip it across, it says no SD card, which, which means it's a success and we're working. So now put back together, so there's two types of screws that go in the motherboard. The longer ones go in the USB port itself. And then we put this heat clamp back on. Again, keep remembering to add some new thermal paste. Then a little bit of capped on tape goes over the board because we don't want to be causing any shorts. And then the last couple of screws need to go in. Connect up the battery before we reapply the rear heat shield again. Make sure you reconnect the two connectors there. And then all these screws need to go back in also. And then a little quick wipe to get rid of all the fingerprints. And the back cover goes back on. I find hooking the bottom edge in first works best.
and then it sort of clips over the top just gentle on the side and it should all click into place and then all we need to do is put all the screws back in the one with the collar goes at the top on the side and then that's it we're all done you press the button and there it says no SD card so if you hold the, the volume up and down together and then turn the, the press the power button then the console will boot as normal to stock firmware just to show that it is still working fine and that's it done so i said i'd never do an oled mod chip again to be fair i actually preferred doing this one to the last one i think a bit more experience since then the microscope definitely helped nice big 10 inch screen and as i said unboxing and link to buying it are both in the description below so thanks again for watching please leave a like comment and subscribe